the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas for Silicon Angles the Cube's coverage of Splunk Conference 2015, hashtag Splunk Conf. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joining my co-host, George Gilbert, Wikibon Big Data Analyst. Our next guest, Mike Denny, who's the VP of Global Security at Verizon, Verizon Enterprise. Welcome to the Cube. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So security is huge. We have been talking about it for many years. Uh, Verizon um, Enterprise, providing a lot of solutions to businesses. Obviously, this is not the Fios or the consumer or the, or the wireless, really the enterprise, which you guys have done a lot of work over the past six years or so or more, mainly past five. Cloud is big, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, creating secure environment, multi-tenant cloud, and then having an application service model for customers. So yep. what's the update on what you guys are doing and how does this fit into Splunk? Sure, so uh, we're looking at the market overall. Uh, we are one of the leading managed security providers today. So uh, as you look across the enterprise, they're looking for uh, managing a very complex environment. Involves a lot of data, uh, involves a very rapidly evolving threat, both external and internal threats. Uh, and as a result, uh, we were looking for uh, technology components that could really bring all of that data together uh, we, we see a lot of data moving across the wire in real time, and, and you really need to be, you, know, you need to capture all that data, you need to aggregate that data, analyze it in real time, and then take some very quick actions in order to remediate it. That's kind of what led us to the Splunk technology. So we heard from Orrstown Bank, really small community bank, a lot of businesses operate like this, whether you're banking, whatever vertical, they want the benefits of scale without having to build it all out because the threats and just the cost to just chasing after, you know, once, you know, you plug one gap, the next bad guy comes in. So security is a moving train mm -hmm. and it's a constant struggle. So if you're a small, medium-sized business to even a large enterprise. Yeah, it's hard. I think it's very hard to attract and retain the talent in the security market in particular. So one of the, one of the benefits of a managed a services provider is that we can scale. I mean, already we're defending large swaths of the backbone of the internet, large scales of the wireless network. Uh, and so we already have uh, uh, acquired the talent and the, the people required to manage and monitor, uh, disperse uh, very secure networks today. And so for uh, a business like that, uh, they uh, would really want to focus on their core business and, and oftentimes they'll come to us and say, can you do something where you're monitoring uh, us in real time, analyzing the threat landscape? Because that's the real challenge of security today. It's, it's a constant evolving threat landscape. New uh, ways to penetrate the network, uh, uh, users and, and uh, insider threats are constantly evolving and, uh, and changing. And that's where you have to have strong analytics so to combat So October 6th through the 9th, we'll be at Amazon reInvent. And we, we hear this all the time. I mean, Amazon has crossed the chasm of being securely legit. And mm -hmm. they've proven that through the CIA win that they had, um, that a public cloud player can get the scale and expertise to understand some of those security challenges and then go out and offer an, uh, a secure environment. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily being the solution for security across the board, but providing a bulletproof, to a degree, SLA-based security. How have you guys crossed over in that regard with your customers? Can you share some insight into some of the things you've deployed, best practices, use cases? Yeah, I, I think one of the specifics are that we are in, we, we don't really care where the environment is, right? So uh, when we are helping, whether it's an on-premise environment, whether it's a remote office, whether it's in the core data centers, uh, uh, we, where we're looking at events and, and log information, it's really independent of uh, location. It can be an Amazon, uh, it could be in your own data center or some other, uh, data, one of Verizon's data centers. So uh, what we're really looking to do is, is put it that inline security. A lot of things that we're doing today are in partnership with, a lot, with the latest hardware and technology providers, uh, whether it's Palo Alto or Cisco or Fortinet, some of these endpoint devices that are you know, the true gateways. We're, we're launching offerings that are bundling network connectivity with security, 
and then uh, Splunk helps us monitor all those devices and then look for anomalous activity. So as you look at your organization and your customer base, what is the role of machine learning uh, in your job and in the future? Um, what, how we apply machine learning in particular is that um, we are looking for use cases. So what we're finding to be the most effective way to spot bad behavior from a security perspective is to build patterns of use cases and that machine learning can be very, very helpful at um, uh, articulating and, and describing what bad uh, activity looks like, whether it's user activity or machine activity to say, hey, Lee, this is anomalous. This happened at the wrong time, from a wrong geolocation, from a server that doesn't usually communicate across the network in this way. So that machine learning is really critical. When you're doing that machine learning, so Splunk has started, has bought some technology to roll into the product. And they make it very clear that you know, machine learning, what they have is applied to security. It's not like we can take some smarts and apply it elsewhere. Are you taking their stuff training it on your data, or are you taking new things as well that goes that go beyond what Splunk provides? It's, a, it's definitely a combination of things. We definitely use and consume what comes kind of out of the box with, uh, with Splunk. What I think the thing that they're really helping with us is there's a, a trend in security called continuous monitoring. Uh, and it really started in the US public sector, but it's really permeating uh, compliance requirements across the industry. And, and, and Splunk is a very effective tool for not kind of point in time or you know, set up a rule and try to block activity, but actually that, that learning and continuously monitoring machines or users that are acting out of pattern. So this would be where the model itself is learning all the time on, this, on the data that's streaming in. Right, and, and so for example, yeah. uh, we see uh, a bad URL or a bad uh, host or server they usually have a lifespan of about 24 to 48 hours. They're very much a moving target. And so what we're able to do is take that learning, apply it into the Splunk engine, and then uh, the Splunk can help us find that bad activity, whether uh, for a multitude of customers. So this is where kind of scale at applying intelligence in real time uh, you know, creates a, a really big benefit. Just, just to be clear, because this is really important, you know, we have this, we have this framework, systems of intelligence, where sort of built on speed, automated decisions. And there's really two pipelines. One is the one where you're learning um, to figure out what, how do I want to make a decision in an automated way, and the other is applying it. And sometimes the two are the same. And it sounded to me when you just described it that you're taking, you do have two separate pipelines, even though the one that's learning is doing it on continuously streaming data, you then deploy it into Splunk, is that right? That's right, uh, well, we have deployed into Splunk, but we deploy it across multiple customers. Uh, so, so if you think about uh, the latest breach or the latest attack, it's very beneficial. Uh, you'll see an attack, and we see it move across verticals. Uh, you know, if you see an attack against one bank, uh, you'll see it against multiple banks, and they do it in very short order. Uh, because they realize that a lot of the, of the threat vendors and the hardware vendors are updating their signatures. This is the type of thing where speed really does matter and the, and the ability to kind of apply those learnings very quickly to the rest of the vertical or rest of the industry is a, is a big benefit. What are the key learnings that you could share with the audience around what's happened in the market over the past you know, 18 months and kind of what's the next kind of trajectory because a lot of change has been, certainly security's been a tailwind for opportunities and challenges as well. Um, what are the key learnings that you could take away and share? Uh, I think um, for us the shift kind of happened about 18 months ago, maybe 12 months ago, where we said, look, we really want to move out of a compliance driven approach to security to one that's really a risk based approach. And, and as you start to understand risk and the, the risk landscape, really analytics plays a critical role in that. So uh, as our, our roadmap plans really shift away from just pure uh, device management and monitoring for the sake of becoming compliant maybe with a uh, security standard to much more of a risk-based approach that says, look, these are the things that we think uh, you need to do in order to reduce your risk. As most security professionals know, compliance does not equal risk. And that's a, that's a key element for what I'm seeing in the market really shift very quickly. Mike, this is important too for, for our understanding. 
So compliance, um, as we understand it, is like black or white. You're in compliance or not. Risk is how much are you willing to pay for a certain level of risk. It's a, it's a, it's a spectrum. Is that the right way to look at it? Yeah, I think that's right. And I think the other way to think about it too is uh, uh, risk is el uh, involves elements of criticality of that data that you're trying to protect, right? So you have to understand where your critical assets are. You have to understand the landscape with which your environment. You also have to understand the types of adversaries you're potentially facing and the type of uh, organizations or entities that could benefit from that data. So the risk is, is a is your uh, you know in context I think is really important of what's critical to you what you really need to protect how much you need to invest to protect it. So what's the challenges for Verizon going forward? We see you guys doing some good stuff out there. Again, Dave Vellante is not here. Commented even two years ago. You know, um, you know the service provider market certainly cloud service providers kind of got a kind of were kind of getting built out in real time. Amazon was doing well. Mm -hmm. And it requires a little bit different, right? So the Amazon's public cloud, kicking ass, taking names, we see that happening. Enterprise is a different ball game, right? So the joke on the cube is it's a, you know, what inning are we in? Well, it's a double header. Game one was <laughs> swept by 10 nothing by Amazon. Game two is Enterprise. Completely I, I, different ball game. Yeah, I, I think where, uh, where we're thinking about the market at uh, Verizon Enterprise is the combination of kind of infrastructure services that includes the network. So it's in context of what, uh, what's the most secure way to move the data around the network. Uh, there's the element of uh, the infrastructure itself. Where is the data residing? And then the security element. So our, uh, the combination of our strategy really includes network, uh, infrastructure and security in, in working in concert. So the way we think about it really is in uh, data loads and and uh, and where are production workloads resident and how do you make them secure? How do you move them most efficiently? And there's a variety of things that you can do depending on the criticality of the applications and how much you know how fast you have to move that data. If you if you string together different solutions based on the application that you're trying to support. So just a quick follow up on that. When you talk about sort of the, the network and its security, where the data resides, um, the overall, I guess, security posture or policy, these are three not independent knobs. They're like, you can turn this one a little and that one a little, and that's the risk-based approach. That's right. It's not black or white. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's where you look at uh, the network, the, the infrastructure, and the security in, in tandem. And so you might have an application where data residency is, uh, is very important, uh, and security, and you dial those knobs up. Uh, maybe latency is a critical uh, component, and that's the kind of thing where you really dial up the network, uh, go to more of a private type of network, and really pull it out of the public domain. So those are all kind of dials, you know, public, private, uh, high, high security, high level of control uh, versus lower, uh, lower uh, levels of control. Just final question, I'm going to get getting tight on time here, but just kind of, but since we got you here, network function virtualization, role of virtualization in general, any new technologies that you see out on the horizon that yeah. are going to be compelling for you guys? Yeah, I, I think the software defined uh, network or software defined perimeter is definitely gaining a lot of steam from a Verizon perspective. And we're doing it both from a network perspective but in concert with uh, security. So uh, I, I think the, the software-defined networking is something that we see gaining a lot of speed. Now that's a, definitely a Verizon-centric perspective. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is we see that uh, with our investment in security, we, we have a competitive advantage there. Final, final question, which is, means it's a good interview when I got two final <laughs> questions. Um, DevOps, what does that mean to you, DevOps for Verizon? Obviously, agile programming is the new, the new normal. The, seeing uh, customers want the, some agile. The thing for us, we've gotten a lot of uh, benefit from kind of co-locating the, the operators with the folks that are building the tools. Uh, we've really taken an approach to take best of breed uh, uh, software and hardware. That's, uh, you know, that's kind of what led us to Splunk in the first place. So, uh, we really focus on the, the, when you say operator for us, we are a managed service provider, so we are an extension of the ops of the enterprises that we serve. Our develops, developers are often co-located 
with the folks in our security operations center globally. You're the ops and they're provide, in dev. Yeah, you yeah. enable them to do development on that, your ops. Absolutely right. And, and we take the best of breed software and make it work and run better because we're applying our real-time threat intelligence and our network visibility into those analytics engines. Mike, thanks so much for sharing your insight and data. I'll give you the final word. Quickly summarize, what's the show about here at Splunk? What's the vibe? What's the real walk away? For the folks that aren't here on the ground, feeling it and seeing it, what's well, happening? Well, there's definitely a, a very positive vibe inside the audience. There's a, there's a great energy. I think uh, it, uh, from a security perspective, looking at the, uh, the investments that Splunk is making, both organic and unorganic, are really uh, showing they're serious about supporting the security market and supporting uh, managed security providers like ourselves to, as we really advance it into the into the marketplace. Mike Denning, VP of Global Security at Verizon Enterprise at theCUBE. Splunk is serious about security. Well, obviously that's the theme here. And we're going to hear about the cloud as well and a bunch of the ecosystem activity. This is theCUBE covering the live event of .conference 2015 here in Las Vegas, live at the MGM. We'll be back with more after this short break.